uh, in, in, uh, among the, the WMPNS committee. And uh, uh, Salman, he, he, as the chairman of this committee, knows me very well because we are uh, working at, with Nikolai, Nikolai also in the mess spine for a long time. And we're organizing many conferences, uh, one of them in Morocco in 2017. You remember, I hope that you... Uh, you, you, you have some uh, good memory about this uh, uh, meeting in uh, Rabat. So uh, today, uh, really, the choice of the topic is very uh, relevant. Uh, the spine uh, 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 disease is one of the most frequent in the world, and uh, it more demanding in, uh, in uh, some uh, cost of uh, material, uh, especially of... Uh, uh, osteosynthesis, uh, cages, etc., etc. So, in Africa, we know that we had in many uh, countries, even in Morocco, even in the north of uh, north of Africa, we have uh, uh, still have many uh, problems with this uh, with the spine disease. Especially today, I had uh, I just uh, uh, finished my one of my thesis thesis with my uh, in internship. She the, she uh, did a great job with the spondylolisthesis, and uh, she's uh, presenting his thesis of uh, of, a, of a medical doctor physician about this uh, the, the, this field and uh, uh, especially the new technical te techniques with the, for for this uh, disease. I mean, it means with the uh, cages and uh, of course uh, uh, osteosynthesis comparatively to the old uh, fashion that it, <laughs> I would say uh, with the intervention of gel it's uh, uh, lamino artrectomy uh, bilateral lamino artrectomy so and uh, the, 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 the I would to say that uh, the conclusion of this the thesis is that it's uh, uh, it's non significant for example, to use uh, osteosynthesis or not, especially for, of course, I have to uh, mention and to uh, uh, underline the fact that it depending, of course, of the mayor uh, classification, because, because the, the grade one and the grade two is totally different, different from the three and four. So this, I, I just tell you, uh, told you about that to tell you that, uh, there is many things to do uh, in uh, spine in Africa, and I am happy that uh, we had in this uh, panel today, uh, uh, you know, a well-known neurosurgeon from Africa and also from uh, around the world, uh, from Europe and from the USA. And uh, for young neurosurgeon, especially African young neurosurgeon, are very eager to uh, you know listen to this uh, uh, this eminent neurosurgeon spine neurosurgeon and i hope that you can uh, in your uh, uh, in your talk have uh, at least uh, one or two slide uh, specifically to young neurosurgeon in africa uh, in asia in at least all uh, 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 in all the low and middle income countries how to uh, deal with the uh, uh, the most of uh, disease, the spine disease, uh, especially with uh, with disease which uh, which is need uh, um, some materials, and we know the cost. How ca how we can uh, reduce the cost of this uh, uh, ma uh, this material, and when it's really is it's necessary to uh, to use it. So thank you so much, and. Uh, uh, of course, I will. Uh, I will hear for all the webinar, and uh, we can uh, start. Uh, maybe uh, the second, uh, the th the third moderator have to add something. I think it's uh, Nicola. Yes, thank you so much, uh, Naji. It was uh, it was a great introduction and uh, good words about. Um, I think it was a good start discussing the challenges of uh, the African. Uh, neurosurgery and in particular spinal surgery. Um, I think we are all set to go and uh, I'm happy that we are all together mm -hmm. today and trying to contribute a little bit more for the education of the African continent, hopefully. 
Um, great speakers, and I can't wait uh, to to give the word to uh, to Roger. I met Roger uh, first time in uh, in Salzburg in Austria in, as part of the uh, Austrian Foundation for Education, which is another um, educational committee. But um, anyway, um, the bottom line is uh, Roger stands as an excellent and uh, outstanding neurosurgeon and also outstanding teacher and lecturer. So I can't wait to, to hear what he has for us. Roger, please. Well, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Well, yeah, so well, thank you, Nikolai, for the kind invitation. Thank you uh, to WFNS, of course, for having me and for the kind words. And especially, you know, since my topic is really spinal surgery in Tanzania, I, I, I cannot do this without thanking Dr. Shabani, who is on this webinar also, and he's been really the, the champion of this program for many years, as has uh, Dr. Qureshi, who's been uh, supportive for many, many years in many, many different countries of our program uh, and, and many others here on this call. So, so I, but I, you, you, you gave me the task to talk about spinal surgery in Tanzania from a perspective uh, from a spine surgeon who practices and, and lives in New York. And I can tell you there are a lot of challenges. And I, you know, we, we started this to train surgeons in Africa, but I, I can tell you that I learn more going there every time I go than probably they learn from us. Mm -hmm. uh, the, um, but I, I want to start out by kind of summarizing the, and, and I think that our program is fairly successful. Uh, and, and what are the reasons why our program is very successful? I think, I think it's based on these seven points. And this is something that really, evolved over the course of 10, almost 15 years now, going back and forth, ha having Zoom calls, having fellows go back and forth. How can a collaboration between an academic institution in North America and a faraway academic institution in Tanzania become successful given the constraints, you know, the economic differences, the distance, the time limitations that everybody have, the cultural barriers and so forth. Well, I think that uh, I think one of the points is certainly that we 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 try to come at least once a year, of course, and that that's like the low hanging fruit. I mean, everybody everybody from North America, everybody from from Europe, they they cherish the opportunity to go to uh, a place far away to to experience the uh, 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 neurosurgical practice there and to teach and train. That that's obvious. Uh, but then we started, uh, after a while, we started doing uh, symposia in Tanzania that many of you have been part of. And, and I think that has been very important because it engages both programs. And it also puts a little bit of responsibility then on the hosting program to put this together. And I can tell you now the Tanzanians are experts at, at organizing meetings, really high quality scientific meetings. And then we fortunately... Uh, we got funding mainly through patient donations here in New York to fund fellowships. Uh, so Tanzanians coming to New York, and that has been, currently we have a nurse here visiting for three months, uh, Sylvia Masawe, who's been here for three months now. We've had a lot of the neurosurgery residents and attendings from Tanzania come to New York, anesthesiologists, neuroradiologists. So that's very important to have Tanzanian visitors in New York. And then we've been fortunate also to have funding to have fellows from Europe or from North America go and move to Tanzania for a whole year and, and, and teach and train there and, and operate there also. And that has been incredibly successful. And then we focused on clinical research because that's something what all of us can benefit from. You know, we collect data. First it was on head injury. Now it's on spinal trauma primarily. Then obviously the weekly Zoom conferences, which kind of allow the glue that keep everything together. And then we published uh, together a lot. So, so you can see this is really about research, about data collection, about publications. And it's not as much uh, about really changing the, the, the practice because that's very, very difficult to do. You, can't, you cannot change somebody's practice from far away. Uh, you, you really have to, but what you can change is uh, uh, the understanding of the current situation you can uh, publish data, and then hopefully through that angle, you can eventually improve the practice, whatever that means for that particular country. 
Uh, this is the website that we uh, have at, at Wild Cornell that summarizes a lot of the work that we've done. And then obviously the, the, the fellows that we've had in New York over the years, most recently, Dr. Beretta here, and now Sylvia Masave, who is a nurse, Dr. Shabani came and, and, and all these others came at some point. And then we've been able and, 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 and lucky to, to fund fellows who go to Tanzania. Beverly was there. She's now in Kenya. Francois Water came from Belgium. Anthony, who's currently now a fellow with us in New York. And then, and then many others have spent time in, uh, in Tanzania. And then, like I said, we've been putting together these courses. And this started, at, you know, we started out at Bugando in 2008. And now we're, we have like our 10th or 15th course overall. Initially, it was more about neurotrauma. Now it's really covering most aspects of neurosurgical care and uh, joint surgeries, the educational lectures, and so forth. But what, what, what was really, I think, most productive from a, from a scientific perspective for us was the work that we've done with the group at Moy on spinal trauma. And this started out a number of years ago where we started collecting data on how are spinal trauma patients being treated in Tanzania. And then Andreas Leidinger and uh, some of the colleagues in Tanzania published this paper in 2019 that showed that there was a prolonged time to the operating room due to lack of instrumentation and insurance coverage. I mean, all of this is pretty obvious, but it's very, very powerful and it's very helpful to actually put it into writing and, and then take it as a, as, as a uh, initiative to, to, to move on and do more research and maybe change practice at some point. But we also saw that surgery and earlier surgery improved outcome, which was very, very important because that data is not really that clear. If you even look at uh, literature from, from, from uh, other parts of the world, and these were some of the cases that we did. That was in Bugando in the operating room uh, years ago doing surgery. So, so what are the factors affecting surgery and outcome based on this retrospective kind of review of, the liter of, of our data at Moy? prolonged time to the operating room due to lack of instrumentation um, uh, was, uh, was, uh, was was a factor uh, contributing to poorer outcome, but surgery and earlier surgery actually improved outcome. Then we, we uh, published a number of publications on, on the non-operative care, the operative care. Uh, this was a, a follow-up paper a few years ago. Oh, somebody un well each take each day taken to the uh, operating room earlier increased the odds of neurological improvement by four percent now now this is retrospective data but it, it is very very important and very powerful because it really gives you a um, an incentive to improve operative care in these patients and then cost effectiveness this is a study and this was really done with uh, with Scott Zuckerman, who was really the driving force behind this. Scott was one of our fellows in Tanzania. And, and uh, while he was there, uh, Dr. Shabani Zuckerman and uh, the surgeons at Moy made a big, big effort to really try to implement a protocol for spine trauma patients. And in doing that, they reduced the time to the OR significantly for a short time period. But they were also able to get data on cost effectiveness. And the cost effectiveness study here showed that spine surgery, spine trauma surgery was more cost effective than many other surgical interventions in low and middle income uh, countries. So, so that was also very, very important because it, it really, again, is a reason to believe that uh, focusing on spine trauma, surgical spine trauma care in appropriate patients is potentially of, of benefit. Uh, this was the protocol that they were used, and this was during Scott Zuckerman's time when they decreased uh, uh, time to the OR, admission to the OR, from 24 to two uh, days, which is pretty pretty dramatic. Pretty so it can be done, um, it can be done. But but another lesson that we learned, and I don't want to go into that, is you got to be very very careful in patients who have cervical spinal cord injuries because those patients are frequently unstable, and we actually saw an increase in mortality in those patients. So. It's not only that time to the OR is better, you also got to make sure you have ICU care, you stabilize patients, and patient selection is very, very important. So, so a lot of lessons uh, learned. Uh, currently, we're working with Moy and uh, also now with UCSF and with uh, the Sign Foundation to implement a uh, program at Moy 
where the Sign Foundation can offer implants at low cost or for free in exchange for collecting data on how, how that will impact spine trauma care long-term. They've done that in other orthopedic areas where the Sign offers implants for free. Um, and, and we're working on a similar project at Moy in, in Tanzania. And I think there's also Moy in Kenya that works with Sign. Uh, maybe Dr. Qureshi knows about that program. Now, what, what else have we done? Uh, especially during COVID then, you know, we started education with Zoom. We had an extremely successful course, and that has been repeated now several times on scoliosis surgery. And that was with Dr. Massimo Balsano and Ala Ahmed, who really, uh, and, and Beverly from, who's in Kenya now, who really spearheaded this effort. So they did every Sunday, they did um, uh, online courses. And then finally, one week of scoliosis surgery in Tanzania, and the response that I've got, you know, we, we've been treating patients with head injuries and spine trauma in Tanzania for, for many years. The hospital never said a word of thank you. <laughs> but after scoliosis surgery, believe it or not, I got letters from the hospital thanking us for, for this effort because it made a, a, a incredible, I guess, financial and humanitarian impact uh, because of these uh, patients that are being treated in Tanzania versus sending them away for expensive surgery elsewhere. So that was a lesson learned that I didn't expect, that something like scoliosis surgery has actually a huge impact if you, if you do it in the right context. So that's definitely a lesson that I learned. And then obviously my interest is MI surgery. So I've been working a lot with uh, AO Foundation and AO Spine to develop um, educational materials for, for minimal invasive surgery. And this really now, uh, Dr. Naja mentioned uh, young, young neurosurgeons, and this really goes out to young neurosurgeons. Um, there are benefits of minimal invasive spine surgery, especially in, in LMICs, if done properly and carefully and, and in the right patient. Uh, this, uh, the AO Surgery Reference now has wonderful educational material available that walks you through a tubular decompression or a microdiscectomy or a tubular T-lift if you have that um, uh, those resources available. And, and we've done that in Tanzania at the course now uh, just a few months ago where uh, we tried to, uh, even last year already, try to introduce more minimal invasive surgery. <clears throat> Brain Lab donated a navigation system <clears throat> to the program in, in Tanzania. But we, but we have to see how that works out. You know, the goal is not to do minimal invasive surgery. The goal is not to do navigation surgery. These things only make sense if they actually really help us take better care of patients. I, I really want to stress that. Virtual reality teaching, however, is incredibly powerful. And we did that at Moy in March with a company from, from Turkey who came and, and, and uh, walked us through virtual reality case presentations and how to put in pedicle screws and all this kind of stuff. So those things are very, very powerful. And I think uh, uh, LMICs uh, should be at, a, at, at the forefront of really uh, pushing this technology because uh, it's, it's the leapfrog phenomenon, right? Um, I think you guys should really be pushing this and, and establish a leadership role in, in the international community in, in virtual reality teaching and training. Uh, I think that's something that you guys should be able to do. And then we, we brought some tubular retractors with cameras to Tanzania and, and started doing some tubular surgery here with Dr. Shabani and with the others. And um, uh, Nicola, you asked me about lessons learned. You know, I, I always talk about MIS surgery and I thought it would be straightforward to do a tubular laminectomy for lumbar stenosis in, in a place like Tanzania. Well, it is straightforward, but what about hemostasis? You know, it turns out that if you do a tubular laminectomy, you have all this epidural bleeding. In New York, we have flow seal, we have gel foam, we have thrombin, we have all these materials. I never realized how much of that stuff I use in my tubular laminectomies to control bleeding. And now suddenly in Tanzania, we were doing a tubular laminectomy, a simple operation for lumbar stenosis, should be a slam dunk, should be like a success story. And then we can't control the epidural bleeding because it's uh, they don't have they don't have any of this, so it's something you would never think about, right? So 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 those are the simple challenges. You got to think about these things beforehand. And then uh, yeah, it's nice now here with this camera. You can you can do this without needing a microscope with better visualization, but you need good monitors. You 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 need you need other equipment that that you may not have available. 
So we did a number of cases there, and Dr. Shabani can maybe comment on how useful or not useful that technology is. I, I'm, I'm personally, I'm still very excited about it, and I would love for them to use it. But just using, um, you know, hemostat hemostatic agents is like such a simple thing for us. But but it's a big deal if you do MIS surgery in in those in those countries. That was the decompression. I mean, this patient did very well afterwards. She had severe lumbar stenosis, and she walked. That was the next day after surgery. And then they did a bunch of cases in Tanzania. And maybe Dr. Shabani can talk about the challenges. Uh, but anyway, so, um, and then I just want to show you, we, we did the navigation. Uh, so we brought in, uh, Brain Lab donated, generously donated a 3D navigation system to the program at Moy. And we did one case, uh, I mean, we did a bunch of cases, but one like an MIS TLF case in a patient with spondylolisthesis. And uh, that case went very well. But it is, uh, but it is, uh, you know, uh, it is something you gotta you gotta teach and train. And I and I and I think they're they're having a little bit of a hard time now utilizing the navigation system. Uh, maybe Dr. Shabani can comment on that as well. We use navigation for every case, uh, but but if you if you have it, uh, if you don't really have somebody there who kind of spearheads it, then it may be a little bit of a challenge if you're kind of on your own. So that was the case that we did there, the brain lab case. Uh, but but those are those are kind of my comments, Nikolai. That uh, there's a lot of great technology out there that should theoretically be helpful. But there are certain things I I cannot do in Tanzania because uh, because I just I, I'm not comfortable doing it because uh, uh, I don't have the fancy technology that I have here in New York, like uh, perk screws. I I don't put in perk screws in Tanzania because I use navigation here. And I haven't used the K wire for perk screws in 15 years. So I'm not going to start doing that in Tanzania. So I'm not the right person to teach that. Those are the limitations. Uh, and um, um, but but also keep in mind most of what we a lot of what we do in spine is really lifestyle surgeries, not back pain, right? Obviously, if it comes to treating a subdural, there's no excuse not to do it because you don't have the technology available. That's a totally different story. But for a lot of what we do in spine, especially middle invasive spine, you know, the indication is pain. And therefore, I think that this is not a life-threatening condition. And therefore, you can wait for the technology to show up at some point. But I think you have the opportunity in those places, like with virtual reality, like with navigation, to really adopt it very, very quickly and become a world leader. And that, that'll put you on the map in Tanzania and elsewhere. So thank you. Roger, amazing. Uh, that was indeed a great presentation. Um, I, I think that uh, you have brought a lot to uh, Tanzania. Um, I would like to ask you, did you bring back something from Tanzania to New York? <laughs> Yeah, I uh, yeah, I mean there are always little little tips and tricks uh, that I bring back. I mean I could show you. Um, I mean last time what they showed me was, um, I mean it's a how how do how to use the bovi through a tubular retractor. You you know I, there's a way to. Uh, it's it's a detail I don't want to go into, but but there are there are there are little things tips and tricks that I learn every time I go to Tanzania. But it's also the big picture, right? The the understand. What I really bring back is just the gratitude to work with colleagues far away, who are really have really become friends, and uh, and and so so the friendships. I think that's for me. That's probably the most important thing. And then there are like tips and tricks from a surgical perspective, but it's really the humility and the friendship that uh, that 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 we experience uh, by having the the visitors here and by going over there. That that's the main thing. Thank you so much. I wanted to ask you another question. Uh, minimal invasive surgery is obviously uh, believed to be a very or more or less expensive enterprise because we need a lot of toys. Um, what is your feeling about introducing a minimal invasive surgery in Tanzania? Well, you know, we haven't looked into endoscopic surgery. You know, I'm, I personally, I'm not a big fan of endoscopic surgery, but I think there are certain uh, advantages. And, and uh, looking at the experience that we've had with tubular surgery in Tanzania, what I just explained, the hemostatic problem, I could, I could imagine like somebody like Dr. Shabani, who is a world expert when it comes to cranial endoscopic surgery, 
uh, and people who train with him, they should they should be able to adopt uh, endoscopic spine surgery. And and there you you don't have the problem with hemostasis, right? Uh, and so you could true you could treat a lot of patients who have disc herniations, lumbar stenosis, other problems. You could treat them very very easily in the country and establish a center of excellence excellence for endoscopic spine surgery in East Africa. Uh, for some reason, the endoscopic spine surgeons haven't really, as far as I know, haven't really uh, expanded very much to East Africa. I think that would be a very exciting area. Indeed. Um, amazing. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I don't know if the the other uh, members of the panel want to ask something or otherwise, Hadara, do you want to present the next speaker, maybe Dr. Shabani? Uh, Tia wants to okay. say something, uh, Nicolay. Yes, please, someone. Yes, Nadia. Oh, thank you. Uh, hi, uh, Salman. So uh, my, my question, I'm sorry that uh, I missed uh, the second part of your uh, talk because I was in my car and uh, my, my iPhone was completely <laughs> destroyed because we have a 36 degree in Rabat. So uh, my question, uh, first, my congratulations to did uh, this uh, great job uh, uh, and this cooperation uh, between uh, uh, New York and Tanzania and uh, low, uh, high country, uh, high income country and low uh, income and middle country. So uh, you, the transfer on knowledge is one of the most things that we need first. But uh, the second uh, part is, uh, uh, and you said it, I think in one your slide when I was uh, connected, it's uh, the link of the, the material and the tools. Uh, uh, and my, my question is also for uh, our friend uh, Shabani, how you deal with, as I, uh, I said in my, in my introduction, how you deal with the, the cost of this material? This is the problem in our continent, Africa, or in Asia, in some countries, in, in, uh, in also uh, Latin America, etc. So if there is any facility facilities uh, coming from uh, uh, New York to Tanzania in, th in this way. And the second question, how you, how you deal with the uh, fellow how, who, uh, who uh, w w want, went to, uh, to New York uh, to have this, their, their fellow? It's, it's easy because we know that the, the visa, the problem the, with the visa and something like this is not easy. To and uh, the, also uh, one of the things, in my opinion, is very important that this fellow that we can uh, operate or just uh, go there as observator. Yeah. So uh, um, the, the fellow, we, we fortunately we have funding. We we have funding to support fellows to come for three months, and then and then the institution here yeah, they have experience in terms of getting the visa and so forth. So, so we have funding through patient donations here in New York to fund fellows to come. In terms of the other equipment, we, we, we realized early on that it's not feasible to bring equipment over because uh, the, it breaks down, there's no maintenance and so forth. So that's why we focus really on teaching and on data collection. So, so my, my hope is by collecting data, for example, on spine trauma, you publish papers on, on the importance of surgery and that hopefully over time, and that puts the burden on the local system, then you will have an impact on the government, the healthcare system to show them, look, we've got local data showing that spine trauma benefits from surgical treatment. You got to support this. You got to, you know, one way or the other. Uh, that, 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 that's one thing. And then the other thing is I mentioned with scoliosis, um, the, with scoliosis, which I didn't expect, the hospital actually realized the benefit of surgical treatment locally. So now we got actually uh, the awareness that, that supporting scoliosis surgery is actually in, in, in Tanzania's interest. So hopefully that'll, that'll then facilitate that over time. So there are lots of little building stones here, you know, uh, but um, Certainly bringing like for MIS, for example, bringing like expensive ex equipment to, to Tanzania is not the right thing to do. I mean, the goal is not to do MIS. The goal is to treat patients better. Uh, but, but I think in terms of spine trauma and scoliosis, I think by, by collecting data and by collecting these types of uh, uh, data points, you, you hopefully will have an impact on the local decision makers. 
my hope and my wishes as a president, the next president of the WFNS to un include your program among the program that you know we had many centers in our country in the, the, the continent and the training of the, the neurosurgeon for, for example I take of always the, the example of Africa but uh, there is the same in Asia and in Latin America uh, we training people uh, for their speciality in, in some some countries in Africa but then we have in the uh, there is another program in the WFNS is the fellow after the residency is for the medical continue formation and training. And this is, uh, uh, this is why I, I, I ask you uh, if we can include your uh, program among the, all the fellow that we can send after their, uh, the, the, they finish their, their residency in, uh, in the different centers in Africa, in Kenya, in Morocco, in Senegal, etc., etc. Uh, are you a, uh, able uh, to uh, join us in this program uh, uh, in the, on the under, uh, umbrella of the WFNS? Thank you. Well, thank you so much. Of course, I, uh, I'll be glad to, 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 to join and, and help in whatever way I can. Yes, for sure. That would be a great honor. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Rogers, for your rich experience in Tanzania and program co collaboration with Tanzania uh, colleagues. I, I know Francois, Francois from Belgium who passed one year uh, in Tanzania in, for this program. And I know it was a great experience for him. So uh, now uh, you can take uh, one question or uh, if not, we can move uh, forward to the second speaker. Uh, Professor Koreshi. Oh, Salman, you have to. I you think it to was uh, Shabani who was going to go. Uh, Shabani, was it Shabani who was going to go first? Sa Salman, you want to, to add something? No, no, no I'm, I'm comfortable. I think uh, second is Shabani who wants to go next. And uh, then Shabani, okay. Sorry. No, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. How do I share my screen? So, Dr. Shabani, in the center, did you did you manage to do that? In the center of your screen, you will see a green icon. Center down say, says share screen. Yep. Click on share screen, please. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Professor Hato, for. Uh, given uh, enlightenment on the project which is going on at uh, Moi, uh, which we are collaborating with the uh, World Cornell under the leadership of uh, Professor Roger Hato and, uh, and the head of the Department of Neurosurgery in World Cornell, uh, uh, Professor Stig. Dr. Shabani, please start your presentation. Click start the presentation. Okay, where? Yeah. That's it. Yep. And microphone is okay now? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Prof. Thank you all for inviting me to this uh, uh, webinar. And thank you, Professor Hato, for giving enlightenment on the project, which is which is currently ongoing for many years now at Moi, uh, in collaboration with uh, Well Cornell and uh, your leadership, and the leadership of the head of the Department of Neurosurgery, Professor uh, Philip Stig. Uh, my name is Amish Shabani. Uh, I'm currently now the head of uh, pediatric neurosurgery unit. Um, and I'm, I'm also a lecturer at the uh, sister college and director of the COSEXA training uh, uh, in Tanzania. Uh, just, uh, this is my conflict of interest. Uh, I'm collaborating with the two institutions, the University of Cambridge and uh, NHIR uh, funded group, and also World Cornell. Uh, this is uh, the status of uh, Muimbili Orthopedic Institute Neurosurgery currently. Uh, we have a six story building uh, and neurosurgery is, this is a, six, this is a 300 uh, bed uh, hospital, but uh, 70 beds are allocated for neurosurgery and 30 beds ICU. Uh, we have a uh, in-hospital physiotherapy unit, but there's no rehab program. Uh, in 1996, when it started, there were only two neurosurgeons. But currently, as I speak, 
There are 10 neurosurgeons who are practicing uh, in spine surgery, as well as six other uh, orthopedic surgeons who are also spine surgeons. Uh, residency program is robust. Currently, we, 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 we have uh, eight students in-house, and we have two international visiting fellows from Well Cornell. Uh, unfortunately, there's no neurocritical care physician, but uh, we have uh, well-trained uh, neurocritical care nurses. Uh, this uh, have uh, some sort of uh, global neurosurgery uh, US certificate. And these are the pioneer group here. I'm going to tell you uh, later as we go along. Uh, when we talk about this thing, I think uh, everyone remembers about this uh, paper in 2001 by Professor Hamlich, African Neurosurgery, Current Situation, Priorities and Needs. And it, it foments very clearly what we are doing currently. Now there's a need for a structured organization in, in training, and there's also need for funding and also a, a supply for medical surgical equipment. Uh, this is challenge until to date. Uh, 20 years uh, down the line. In Tanzania, there are two uh, well-established centers which are performing spine surgery. Mwindili Orthopedic Institute, where, where I belong. Uh, this is the leading uh, hospital, but there's uh, also another sister referral hospital uh, in the northern part uh, around uh, uh, Mount Kilimanjaro, uh, Kilimanjaro region, uh, where they also do the same. But uh, uh, mostly they do uh, non-conservative uh, 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 methods of uh, spine trauma care. The burden of the problem, this is uh, where you can see uh, the first paper, which was uh, published in 2000 uh, and 2014, showing the audit of uh, four, uh, four years, uh, they collected uh, 224 patients and it was estimated 24 per million population are currently uh, 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 at risk of getting a spine, uh, spinal cord injury or any form of spine uh, uh, injury in Tanzania. Uh, with the increase in urbanization, this uh, program is expected to rise. Uh, male to female ratio is actually uh, disproportional, mainly male, male and uh, young uh, age group. At Moy, uh, I'm giving you the, the audit we did uh, with uh, Dr. Francois uh, before he left for, I mean, after his fellowship in 2021. Uh, this is the distribution, 600 uh, patients. And you can see the number is increasing, is rising since we started the program. And the distribution of cases. Mostly, we have a big chunk of cases uh, uh, with thoracolumbar uh, spine trauma and a few of spine uh, cervical spine uh, trauma. Most of the patients are from the motor traffic crash. A few are from the fall from the height and industrial injuries are very few. Our protocol, this is just to contrast uh, before 2015 and after 2015, uh, what was being done. And you can see very clearly uh, there's a, a progress uh, with, uh, with the training, investment, and also in, in terms of number, uh, in terms of uh, technical and, and skills uh, build up. So, how did we go through this? Actually, number one, international collaboration. We emphasized on the international collaboration. When Professor Hato came uh, 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 under Madaktari Africa Group by that time, uh, we accepted uh, his invitation and uh, we started the way down the line. And then all our activities, we made it very open and honest uh, to the policymakers. So you can see, the photographs, two photographs on the left side. Uh, that one uh, on the left, far most uh, left, this is the president of Tanzania at that time, uh, uh, Honorable Jakaki Kwete. Uh, we invited him for 
opening ceremony uh, of, of the first conference, which uh, Roger and uh, Professor Stig at the background, you can see him, uh, we opened the conference. And this is how we involve the politicians to know the importance of what we are doing. The second photograph, this is the minister. This was a different conference. And uh, this is how we do. And then the other thing which we emphasized was the quality improvement program. So all our database collection, we we audit we audit them and we make them uh, uh, available for, for publication and sharing with the policymakers. So I don't need to go uh, much with this one. Uh, Professor Roger has uh, done uh, a great deal on uh, elaborating what we usually do. Uh, uh, but I can emphasize on the donation of implants. I, I think uh, well Cornell for fundraising and sending equipment each time. Every time when they, uh, the well Cornell team arrives at Moy, we receive a donation of uh, uh, spine implants enough to, uh, to treat patients for the whole year. So this has been the trend until to date. We thank you, Roger, for that. You can see here our minister. She came to inaugurate the conference in 2022. And uh, actually, uh, the executive director at that time. And uh, uh, this is how we do. So let's see how far have we gone. So this is the paper which was published by Andreas uh, in 2017. And uh, uh, Roger has also mentioned about it. And it, it, it mentioned, it talks much of who is getting surgery and who is not getting surgery. And, uh, and initially uh, surgery was only available to those patients who could pay for implants and pay for surgery. And this, is, well, this was the uh, crux of this paper. And the second point was the uh, length of, uh, of stay and also time to surgery. Uh, terms of, to surgery was so much delayed, uh, and this was related to the uh, location where the patient is coming from, and this is what we found. Uh, so we emphasized uh, when we got this uh, information, we shared with the policymakers, and we started uh, our own uh, local uh, uh, training and invitation of uh, local surgeons to uh, the conference uh, uh, meetings to improve on that one. The other thing we did was uh, improvement on the protocol, and this the aim was uh, to improve the uh, to, to increase the number of surgery uh, when we got donation, and also to delay uh, time to surgery. I think this uh, Professor Hart has already mentioned, uh, but I, I can share with you the data which uh, uh, we I can show you later. The other thing we improved, you know. It's not everything that uh, we need donation, like uh, draining system for uh, post wound uh, uh, care. So we made this improvisation. You can see this is a used uh, a used IV tubing, and uh, uh, I mean IV the used IV bag, but uh, the sterile uh, IV tubing, uh, and uh, this can stay for. Uh, overnight and 24 hour, and then it is removed. And we didn't find any infection in these patients. And it has been now uh, the, the protocol in, in our post of care for spine uh, uh, surgeries. This one, minimal invasive, uh, 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 I mean, the, 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 the 2D uh, uh, obviating the use of CM, I mean, uh, uh, exposure to X-rays, I think uh, Roger has already mentioned about it. I don't need to talk much about it. Um, so from our database, this is the number of papers, uh, more than 12 papers uh, in the peer review journals. And these are, and these are, uh, are easily accessible uh, are free uh, in Africa. Uh, using the uh, 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 the Medline uh, database. So this is the data I wanted to show you. Uh, 
with a total of 600 uh, patients. Uh, and when we emphasized on the protocol and we received, uh, we emphasized, uh, we, we, we emphasized on doing surgery to all patients. This is what happened. The number of surgeries increased at more during the, 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 the grant period. Uh, when we, we, we emphasize on the supply of uh, implants free to all the patients. And again, at the same time, this is what happened. Uh, mortality also increased. If you see the trend of mortality in, in all these years, it was very low. But during the uh, emphasis on the grant and the protocol surgery for all, this is what happened. And we found out that all the patients who died, actually the majority were from the C-spine injuries. And we noticed that uh, the preoperative care was of paramount importance. So this is what we did. Uh, this is uh, when we presented this data to the minister and uh, actually we, we, we ended up getting uh, the brand new ICU. So before that we used to have uh, an eight uh, makeshift eight bed ICU, and now we, we have a 30 bed ICU with all the monitors, except the, the, the ICP monitor, which is not there. And uh, we have now the skilled uh, nurses, but uh, we, we, we are still striving to look for a critical care, neurocritical care physician. The nurses training was also through the uh, US uh, funded uh, program by Moi NAS Educational Project. NAS is the North American Spine Society Education Project, and we created uh, a pioneer in neurosurgery in neuroclinical uh, 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 care nursing group. And this is the group which is now pioneering in teaching uh, the other uh, train of the trainers uh, method. So we are asking ourselves, you know, uh, everything now going very well, but uh, what happens if there's no grant? Because the grant shows a good uh, 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 outcome in performance. So, but what happens if there's no grant? So this is what now we are embarking on. Uh, we did a survey on pre-hospital care of trauma patients to, uh, to, uh, uh, to address the awareness and uh, what we can inform uh, the policy makers. And this is the paper we published. Uh, we, are also, we are also actively engaged in social, in social media channels, uh, television, radio, these are local. We're also performing surgical camps and uh, we are also in the process of uh, establishing a local NGO, a non-government organization, which will address spine trauma survivors. And uh, uh, these are the four points which uh, we, we think can be uh, 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 focused on that group, implant cost, rehabilitation, prevention, and self-help projects. So in summary, this is, what I wanted to say, uh, it is feasible. I mean, we should not be afraid that Africa, we cannot do uh, spine uh, surgeries. Of course, we know that uh, uh, we need skilled human resources. This cannot be done by uh, 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 barefoot doctors. The infrastructure of the hostel can be uh, improved if we involve the, po the policy makers and guide them protocols. Uh, here, this is where we need to do our own uh, uh, in reinvention of the wheel, because uh, some technologies cannot be affordable and accessible uh, in our setup. So we need to do uh, uh, some homework in this area. Uh, equipment supplies, rehabilitation services. This is uh, this is I mean the last topic. This is the this is the this is the uh, definition which need to. Uh, be addressed by all African countries. Uh, I'm not sure. In Tanzania, we don't have a rehabilitation services yet. And I'm not sure whether uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, except South Africa, this service is available. 
So there's a need, there's a need to develop a spine trauma care program in, in low and middle income country uh, in summary. So I, I, I focus on the political aspect. Uh, Roger has mentioned much of the clinical aspect, which we do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Dr. Shabani, I like the, the way how you are inventive and how you have to overcome different things that um, uh, you don't have the facilities to do. I like the idea of um, uh, using um, uh, the drain, the, the, the improvised drain that you that you have shown. Thank you very much. I, I myself, I'm coming from uh, Bulgaria, which is, uh, uh, it was a communistic country, and shortly after communism, we had uh, problems with supplies and all that. So um, I, I know where you are. We have to be inventive by that time as well. We were, for example, in your situation, we were using just a glove, a simple glove that we will tie at the end of the drain. Uh, but oh, I think you found a better solution. Yeah, and every time that tube can be, can be changed uh, after maybe half an hour or every hour, this is how we create the suction pressure. So, yeah, whoever, so yeah, whoever wants to uh, try that one, it is very helpful. We 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 even adopt it now for the for the craniotomy. So the patients wake up in the morning. Uh, there's no fascial swelling at all. It's, it's, Amazing! It's, that is yeah, uh, that's really really good idea. Yeah, it's very versatile. Yeah, I wanted to talk on the diatomy. Uh, Roger uh, uh, th threw that uh, to me. Uh, on the diatomy, you know, the, 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 the common one which is applied in our area is the, the wide one. I mean, the, 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 the ball tip is, is wide one. So when you do find a section, you find it is not uh, like a pin prick dissection. So we, we add, we, we, connect, we connect a 10, a 10 cc uh, needle uh, on it and we clamp it with a, with a rubber glove. This is what we do. And it works uh, perfectly. Again, uh, if um, I see that uh, because you don't have um, uh, the, the resources that would normally Roger have in New York, you have to be more inventive. And this is only good. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. I think John Thank Jarang you. and Roger have raised their hands. Uh, John, uh, would you like to uh, uh, Sorry, I have a question. Thank you, Moody. Uh, just really to, uh, I would like to uh, congratulate you for this uh, wonderful work that you are doing in Tanzania. And uh, we know that uh, the needs in uh, this, in uh, the, the most uh, African country is, uh, is uh, huge and the burden on, uh, on the shoulder of the, the, the neurosurgeon uh, in uh, the, Many many countries in Africa is very 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 important and tremendous. So uh, to be very inventive, and uh, when we saw that you you have the mortality after the, the spine trauma and uh, uh, it, it's it's a really it's a pity for the for for for, for you because all uh, you you are doing a, a great a tremendous job and. Uh, uh, what do you need for, uh, because uh, if I my understand it, that the, the mortality is because the hemorrhage. Is it, is it correct? Amish, uh, Dr. No. Shabani? No, it was not hemorrhage. It was actually a stabilization of the, of the cardiovascular system uh, before and after surgery. Because this patient uh, uh, who died had, had profound hypotension, uh, even before surgery and uh, after surgery. Okay. And then the protocol, ICU protocol was not uh, robust at that moment and the resources were not available. So uh, we had to raise this uh, alarm to our policymakers and uh, actually we got immediate uh, response uh, with the establishment of the ICU. Yeah, I totally agree with you. The solution is not, uh, yes, the cooperation, the collaboration 
with the high uh, income country is very important, but it's not enough. We need our, our uh, you know, proper, uh, our proper decision maker, uh, politician, politician maker. And your uh, conclusion, I really, I uh, appreciate it because you are, you need to, uh, we, we need, we should to count on our, uh, our uh, policy maker and also on our neurosurgeon and, and uh, to have a sustainability on, in, in this, uh, not only in the trauma, uh, spine trauma, but all the, the, the global neurosurgery, I would like to say. Thank you. Yeah. Very, 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 I, I, I appreciate very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Dr. Shabani, I have a question. Uh, yeah. You said uh, you are uh, 10 neurosurgeons for your institute or all for, for, the, for Tanzania? And also, you uh, two years ago, you involved uh, politicians to take interest in your activity. Did you get any positive feedback in short time from this section in terms of equipment of uh, infrastructure? Yes, indeed. Actually, uh, uh, if I if I, I if I mention it very correctly, uh, uh, the hospital the hospital was uh, actually developing into phase three uh, uh, program, and. Uh, and uh, immediately when we mentioned of our outcome in spine surgery, also the focus was also to improve on uh, neurosurgical, neurocritical care. And then the second thing is uh, the COVID. I think uh, most of the African countries got the COVID funding from the uh, world, world donation. And uh, we, are, we are very lucky. We also got uh, a big chunk of that fund into the neurotrauma and the neurocritical care uh, project. Okay, thank you for your green, great work. Uh, is there any question? Uh, there's or... uh, Jabang and uh, Samuel Kaba have raised their hands. John, would you like to unmute yourself and ask your question or make your comment? Please unmute yourself. It's Okay, I don't know if you can hear me. Yes. Yes, we yes. can hear you. Yes, okay, just to thank Dr. Shabani for that uh, wonderful presentation. John Javing is my name, neurosurgeon in the Gambia. And I think I so much like your last slide where you talk about international collaborations. Unfortunately, some of our countries are not really, and our ministries are not really forthcoming in supporting neurosurgery. And we heavily depend on international collaborations. And for the Gambia too, as a series, it's usually the international collaborations that have also helped us, you know, move from one stage to, to another. Um, I just wanted to have some few questions uh, regarding the mortalities that you have, Dr. Shabani, and uh, you, you really alluded that most of them were from cervical spine, you know, injury. Um, the little experience that we have, um, because of the fact that we do not have very good ICUs around, so we have to classify the patients with cervical spine that we operate and those that we don't operate. So for instance, when a patient comes with a high cervical spine injury um, or a patient that comes with uh, abdominal respiration and there is an affectation of the phrenic nerve, we naturally would not operate on that patient um, because usually our outcomes are not, have not been good. And also because we don't have very good ICUs you know, to take these patients and intubate them and ventilate them for quite a long time. So that has been our practice based on the current situation we have. We do hope it is going to change. But my question to you is, have you had um, any other differences, especially when your ICU was, uh, you know, was developed and you have nurses that were trained, you know, in the management of these patients, especially with C-spine injury? Did you see any uh, differences? Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Jaban. Uh, we, we had the similar experience before the ICU uh, was robust. Uh, patients who, I mean, patients who had uh, high cervical spine injuries, uh, actually very low blood pressure and uh, priapism and uh, difficulty in breathing, and they cannot uh, breathe without uh, intubation. Actually, they died with the hypothermia. Uh, this is this was the, our last sign to to record on those patients when they die, and uh, then we improved on uh, now that's okay. We have the instruments 
uh, we have the technique and we have the operating room with the full equipment. We operate on these patients, expecting that these patients will improve. And we ended up uh, getting the, the paradox. Uh, but uh, with the introduction of the ICU and the ICU protocol, uh, which has been now spearheaded by uh, our neurocritical care nurses and the neurosurgeons uh, ourselves, uh, we are now getting uh, good results. Actually, what we do is when those patients arrive, we stabilize them uh, with uh, noradrenaline and dopamine. And then uh, we send them to surgery, decompress the spine, stabilize the spine. And then they continue with the resuscitation until they recover. It takes long. The, the, the longer, the long stay patients in our, uh, in our record, uh, which I remember, stayed for, for three weeks on dopamine and noradrenaline uh, 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 interchange, on interchange. Uh, but uh, he recovered. OK, thank you. Uh, now we can move to the next speaker, Dr. Koreshi. Thank you very much. Uh, can you see my slide? Yes. 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 Okay. Very well. Thank you, uh, 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 Shabani. It's uh, obviously very gratifying. Just before that, I think Samuel Kaba has been raising his hand for some time. Would you please go ahead, Samuel? Unmute yourself. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, Samuel Kaba. Yeah, you, yeah. Thank you so time. very much for the observation because I raised my hand in the previous speaker. I raised my hand now, yeah, I and know. I just keep getting my hand down. Uh, yeah. I, I want it's to share some little experience and uh, a, a question. For the previous speaker, when we sp I fortunately I work in a center where we use VR almost every day. Uh, the visual reality we use uh, OAM. We do neural navigation every little day. Okay, now. The challenge uh, that we do have has to do with insurance because you, we can have all the grants. Once we are not able to incorporate this kind of um, heart surgeries or expensive surgeries in our national health insurance systems, whatever we do, we're not going to get the satisfactory results because patients cannot pay out of pocket in most of the cases. So I, I don't know what is being done in Tanzania when it comes to the national health insurance where at least it could cover some of this uh, cost. In Ghana, it's not covering everything, but it covers to some level. And uh, I, I think that it is one thing that can actually help change uh, the, uh, the impact. The second thing has to do with the VR system. Uh, with the experience in Tanzania, uh, that's for the previous speaker, were you able to have transatlantic uh, VR um, uh, educational program where uh, you are in the States, they are in Tanzania, and you are able to connect in the theater room and uh, simulate some surgeries just to know if that had happened. And then my final thing has to do with the, the whole mentality within surrounding this, um, the issue of the road traffic accidents and head injuries, spinal injuries. There is something very simple that we try to spearhead that has to do with the style of life. If we don't follow that and have a good pre-hospital system where you have an ambulance uh, or the ambulance system that can actually recognize where an accident has happened on scene care and the people get put in a taxi or in a commercial vehicles to get to the hospital, you don't achieve much. With rehabilitation, yes, it's quite expensive as well. In our experience, we do have re rehabilitation centers in all the major hospitals. And uh, they tend to be quite expensive and prolonged, and patients cannot pay. They cannot just pay. Whether it's a stroke, it's a trauma, they can't pay. So uh, I would want to actually contribute that. Let's also fight hard to see how our national health insurance systems can support um, in, in, in looking at this. And of course, neurosurgeons, we are nothing without radiologists. We are nothing without ICU and the rehabilitation and many other specialties. And we can be training as many neurosurgeons as possible. If we don't train these uh, other specialties that or help in their training that actually make our work easier. If you don't have a good pathologist, you can remove the best tumor in, in a way, but what diagnosis would you get? And if you don't get good radiotherapists, they, they die within a short time. 
So I think we should start looking at things holistically and, and paying good attention to our own countries trying to develop these things than not just the international world go. Once the grant is over, which I agree with you, we go back to square zero. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Kaba, for your contribution. Uh, but uh, for, because of the time, you have to move on and leave, leave comments for, for the end. You can take comments for, for the end after. Uh, so, uh, uh, Dr. Koreshi, you can uh, go for the, your talk. Thank you. Thank you very much. Most impressive talks by Roger, as always, and Shabani, it's very impressive. I do remember the day when I did go, uh, when we were trying to put the Kosexa program together, and I think you were in uh, in Japan at the time doing your PhD. Uh, there was only two neurosurgeons, Joseph Kahamba and Abedi Kinasha. And really, you've come a long way, and I congratulate everyone involved. And I think the support you've had from the government uh, has been phenomenal. And uh, uh, Roger, thanks for having personal links with one of the presidents. I think it does also help, but uh, I, I do believe that Tanzania has come a long way and congratulations to all those from Tanzania. So my uh, focus is going to be essentially on what Salman asked me to do, which is to try and bring forth the challenges that we face and spine surgeons face in Africa. And in a humble way, I'll try and uh, offer some possible solutions. And I'm very pleased that Nadia, our future WFNS president, and Graham, the president of the Congress, who's going to host all of us in December, are listening. And I think we should have that opportunity to perhaps move things forward towards possible solutions. So thank you very much, Salman, for putting this together. Nicola, thank you very much for inviting me. And Imadullah, who's always working behind the scenes very hard for putting this together. Uh, thank you very much for all the effort that you always make and make things so smooth for us all. So uh, we've just heard about the challenges of developing spine surgery in Africa. And this is the reality. Uh, basically, we're very few and look at that skinny Africa uh, that uh, uh, has tried to change, and I think we are changing, but the challenges do remain. So I will take a lead from a paper that Salman and my member Zaleli put together and just give an overview of what the history of spine surgery has been in Africa. Uh, I do uh, recognize that not everybody responded to the survey that uh, Salman and Mehmet Zaleli and all the members of the spine committee uh, went through, but it does give an overview of the history of spine surgery. The authors, all the neurosurgeons from different countries were able to uh, be surveyed, information was collected, uh, uh, and the current status of spine surgery globally was, uh, was, was brought to attention through this publication, which is a very valuable publication, and I'd recommend everyone to go through it. Uh, we had responses from all the continents, the Americas, USA, Mexico, Colombia, Brazil, Europe, the countries mentioned there, Asia, the countries mentioned there. Uh, in Africa, uh, we sent, I think, uh, uh, surveys was sent to, uh, I believe, all the African countries, but responses were received from Egypt in North Africa, Nigeria from West Africa, Kenya from East Africa, and uh, we know that a lot of very, very uh, advanced surgery goes on in South Africa, but we couldn't uh, see in this publication uh, the, uh, the details from South Africa. But the paper did provide an opportunity for further uh, survey. And I think Haidara and the Spine Committee, we might want to do a follow-up uh, so that all the African countries have given an opportunity to provide their uh, situation. So the history of spine surgery in Egypt, uh, first trials of laminectomy were performed at the Kasser al Aini General Hospital. Uh, the spine activity by neurosurgeons started by Professor Soror in 1955. And then the Egyptian Society of Neurological Surgeons was founded in 1967. Spine specialty in uh, Egypt was created in 2006 through the Egyptian Neurospine Group, 
Uh, and then the spine practice is in Egypt is uh, mainly conducted from what I, uh, the paper understood by a neurosurgeon. Orthopedic spine surgeons mainly conduct deformity correction surgery in Egypt. Instrumented fusion surgery started in the 70s and Egyptian Spine Association was launched in 20, 2011 and now has one of the largest uh, members of uh, orthopedic and spine uh, working on Africa, and that is in Egypt. Uh, and they do regular meetings and have produced quite a lot of um, very valuable publications. The history in West and Central Africa, in West Africa and Central Africa, surgical uh, spine pathology management is almost exclusively, uh, from what the paper understood, was done by neurosurgeons. And this was basically to decompress the spinal cord and stabilize the spine. Uh, in each neurosurgical region, spine specialists are evolving. There are no societies dedicated exclusively to spine surgery in West and Central Africa. Traumatic spine and TB were the main uh, sources of morbidity and mortality, and the frequency of compressive myelopathies and the etiology has not been evaluated extensively in most of sub-Saharan African countries. And epidemiological studies are rare, and it was very pleasing to see Shabani present some work uh, from central, uh, from uh, sub-Saharan Africa. In, in Nigeria, spinal neurosurgery has been practiced since 1966 at the University College Hospital in Ibadan in Lagos. Uh, the Nigerian society has been active uh, since 1966, and the main uh, management evolves around congenital malformations, TB, degenerative spine, uh, spine tumors, and trauma. The Nigerian Spine Society Academy of Neurological Surgeons was formed in 2006. The Nigerian Spine Society has both neurosurgeons and orthopedic surgeons and was founded in 2018 by Dr. Kabir Abubakar. The Nigerian AO Spine was registered in 2019. So there's more activity in Nigeria. Uh, diagnostic facilities of MRI, CT scanners are now available in most teaching hospitals. Fluoroscopy is available in over 30 hospitals offering spine surgery. And uh, spinal implants are routinely used in Nigeria. There's minimally invasive spine surgery uh, is also being offered in a few centers. Spinal surgeons and orthopedic surgeons manage a large variety of spine cases, uh, deformities uh, in, uh, in uh, Nigeria. In Kenya, the history of spine surgery is attributed to this gentleman who was once the WFNS second vice president for Africa. Professor Renato Roberti was the pioneer of the Neurological Society in Kenya and was the first WFNS second vice president for Africa. He founded the Neurological Society. And for us all, it's good to remember that our Pan-African Association of Neurological Sciences uh, was launched in Nairobi by this gentleman in 1972. And uh, as a, a Renato played a, a pioneering role, not just in, in Kenya, but in Africa through this, and was also one of the founding members of the African Federation of Neurosurgical Societies, who which we all proudly speak about. Uh, neurosurgery was mainly conducted at that time at two hospitals only in Kenya, the Aga Khan Hospital and the Nairobi Hospital. In the mid 60s, uh, an orthopedic surgeon along with Professor Roberti would do uh, surgery for TB, lumbar laminectomy for discs and stenosis, mainly based at the what was then called the European Hospital and the King George V, which was later to become our national hospital. Uh, Professor Jawahir Dar from India uh, is, is credited with launching a separate unit for neurosurgery at the National Hospital. This was the European Hospital, which was essentially launched in 1954 to serve just the European colonial population. The others had to go saint elsewhere, and the name was then changed to Nairobi Hospital when Kenya became independent in 1963. Uh, the Aga Khan is credited for doing a lot of development, both in Pakistan, Afghanistan, uh, and uh, in East Africa. And he's the spiritual leader of the Ismaili Muslim community. And here he's seen coming to launch the Aga Khan Hospital, uh, 
1958, which was to become the first multiracial hospital in the city. Uh, microsurgery was introduced by yours truly uh, following the training in Southampton. Uh, and doesn't sound like a lot, but the first microdiscectomy was carried out at the National Hospital in 1992. Uh, we also pioneered the use of what is now becoming uh, unavailable, which was the heart cell rectangle and sublaminar wiring in Kenya, which was then used to stabilize the cervical, thoracic, and lumbosacral spine. This is just an example. And at that time, and for many years until 1996 and later, uh, we've been using uh, uh, heart cell rectangles and sublaminar wiring. I want to pause there a little bit and focus on that because a lot of our uh, countries and regions, including when I go and do missions in, in around the region, uh, don't have access, as we've heard, uh, to pedicle screws, and uh, the costs are prohibitive. And so I still have a, a fair number of hard cell rectangles and sublaminar wiring, which I then take along with me, and for appropriate patients are still useful. Uh, I do hope that this will not be frowned upon by the World Spine Committee because it is a need that it is serving. And I think really it has served and I think will continue to serve those patients that cannot access pedicle screws and titanium screws because of their non-availability and uh, much, much significantly more expensive. Uh, now the current generation is now uh, in Kenya is performing uh, good surgeries. Uh, uh, we've got endoscopic spine surgeons, for example, we've got somebody trained in that too, one orthopedic and one neurosurgeon uh, doing endoscopic spine and current approaches to cervical instrumentation is being done by the younger uh, group of uh, uh, surgeons in Kenya. Uh, spinal surgery now uses, in Kenya, uses neurophysiological monitoring uh, and is routinely performed uh, with neuromonitoring and uh, enhancing the safety. Uh, we've, at, this, at some of the hospitals, we have the O-arm along with neuromonitoring facilities. Uh, we've managed to get trained for spinal cord stimulator, station, st spinal cord stimulation for neuropathic pain. Uh, and steadily the pro progress has become such that even outside the capital uh, we've gained uh, a level that is trusted by our political leaders who used to travel abroad for their surgeries but this time in July 14th a history was made in one of our uh, provincial hospitals near the Lake Victoria where one of my uh, dear friends and colleagues and I think known to Salman as well uh, uh, Mr. David Olwacholunya, a neurosurgeon, along with the team, uh, operated on the political leadership of that region, and he was very proud, uh, uh, proudly uh, stating that this had been done back in his home. I have put this photograph after getting confirmation that he has uh, given his consent that we can use this to show that we are progressing in some parts of uh, region. But despite this progress, significant challenges remain. This is uh, the first uh, uh, pedicle screw fixation that was carried out uh, in Zanzibar. And uh, as we were doing this, we had to really tweak the, uh, in the operating room, uh, tweak the image intensifier uh, and had to push it. And if you see the video, it's making some particular noises as it is being dragged along uh, to be put in position. So lucky we had the image intensifier, but really it, it's a big challenge for many, many hospitals in our region. So the main challenges that we have across Africa is human resource, uh, where despite the, the huge uh, progress that we've made, uh, as I said, in Tanzania, from two neurosurgeons, we have about 15 now, I believe, Shabani. Uh, but yet, um, in, across Africa, the average is one neurosurgeon to 1.5 million, uh, and all spinal surgeries are conducted by general neurosurgeons. There are very, very few dedicated fellowship-trained spinal neurosurgeons. There's a, a variety of very complex pathologies, both traumatic and uh, non-traumatic. And the facilities, apart from centers in the main cities, such as Dar es Salaam in Tanzania, uh, Nairobi 
uh, and now Kisumu in Kenya, the general public hospitals are really unsuited for performing complex spinal surgeries. This is where the majority of our population resides. So really, uh, this needs to be addressed. And then there is the whole issue of equipment and consumables that has just been mentioned. And public hospitals particularly lack dedicated equipment for complex spine surgeries. Implant costs, as I mentioned, are prohibitive given the allocated healthcare budget. And uh, so addressing the challenges, uh, here is uh, uh, Roger Hartle in, uh, in his younger days, I would imagine, as was uh, some of us uh, uh, when we first met uh, in Tanzania. The humanitarian missions, which uh, individuals uh, uh, such as uh, Roger Hartle provide, have developed regular mission programs resulting in a steady impact on both training of local human resource and management of complex cases, as Roger and both Shabani have shown us very, very nicely. There are spinal surgical training courses that the WFNS and other NGO uh, to, uh, undertake. These are organized by both the neurosurgical societies and philanthropic and non-governmental organizations. And then there are the local neurosurgical training programs and these have addressed the problem. We're very fortunate that we now have established uh, MMED training in neurosurgery and the college-based training at both the West African College, the South African College, and the College of uh, Surgeons of East Central Southern Africa, which is now producing a fair number of neurosurgeons for our need, as is uh, as are many other countries uh, on the continent. And then these uh, both the NGOs conduct courses which are held for regional neurosurgeons. This is one that was uh, that was uh, taking place in uh, the Kenyatta National Hospital, uh, and of course through the societies such as the WFNS Spine Committee. Uh, there are great workshops that are held for training of neurosurgeons. This addresses the problem, uh, certainly, and these are conducted by world-renowned faculty uh, right across the region in many, many of our regions. And these humanitarian uh, missions uh, are conducted at regional public hospitals. Uh, here is one example in uh, Zanzibar in Dar es Salaam many years ago. Uh, so the COSEX, uh, the College of Surgeons of East Central Southern Africa, which has been accredited after Rabat as the second WFNS reference site for the Anglophone region, is, is uh, helping to address the human resource issue. Uh, and then there is the, the problem of complex pathology. Often, arriving at our doorsteps uh, in a very, very uh, difficult situation, very complex, uh, large tumors. Uh, and really, this is a matter, a matter of uh, the delayed uh, uh, diagnosis. The public hospitals, as I mentioned, are... Uh, don't have equipment. Here is uh, an image of a public hospital and one of our regional public hospitals uh, where we've had to take portable equipment in order to conduct these missions. And the uh, this support in these is usually provided by volunteer and philanthropic uh, individuals uh, such as Roger Hartle, Mike Hagland in Uganda, uh, Jose Piquer in Tanzania, and others around the region, and I'm sure many, many countries uh, across Africa have a very similar story to tell. So addressing the challenges, equipment particularly, is at the moment is being addressed by philanthropic and humanitarian missions that lend support to address the issue. This certainly assists to treat the complex cases, as we've seen from Rogers and uh, uh, Shabani's uh, presentation. However, this cannot be relied upon for consistency, as uh, Dr. Kaba said, as implants are not readily available. Once the stock gets, uh, you, the donated stock is uh, utilized, then we don't have in these situations anymore until another humanitarian group comes along. And that is really not a 
formula for consistency and reliability. A reliable system needs to be developed for human, local human resource, facilities, equipment, and implant. And I'm glad that Nadia is here because the WFNS Spine Society, working with the WFNS Foundation, I believe can provide such a solution. We already have, uh, and uh, Nadia and I have worked on this uh, for many years together, the WFNS Foundation provides high quality instruments for neurosurgeons all across the globe in LMIC regions. And we've been fortunate to receive and also been responsible within the foundation uh, to uh, help provide this uh, uh, these instruments uh, through the World Federation, uh, where companies such as Esculap and others provide uh, an attractive platform to sponsor high quality neurosurgical instruments for neurosurgeons from developing countries with uh, the, uh, where there is a great need. Uh, to help patients. The WFNF basic sets, for example, are provided by Ascula at preferential price and cover the most common procedures in cranial and spine surgery. And I think somewhere in there is lies the solution. This is uh, another very uh, valuable uh, uh, availab availability of instruments through the foundation. The Pico microscope and the high-speed drill uh, bipolar sets are all available uh, through this foundation. And I think somewhere in there lies, uh, and then this is thanks to Professor Majid Sami's vision back in 1997, when the foundation was founded through his own funds uh, to develop the foundation to help LMIC countries globally. And at the moment, it really is providing help to a lot of neurosurgical units across the world. So here is where I see there is a potential role for the WFNS Foundation. I think the WFNS Foundation has a long track record, uh, as we've said, of negotiating with renowned suppliers, Medtronic, Esculap, Zeiss, Stores. We know that the Chabra Shant, which is, uh, costs somewhere around $35 to $40, as opposed to uh, the other shunts, which cost about $200 and $300, uh, has been endorsed by the WFNS Foundation. And a lot of patients with hydrocephalus, for example, in the LMIC countries uh, have benefited. And Ben Wolf conducted a, a, a study comparing the, the Chabra shunt with other uh, very much more expensive shunts and found that the results were equivalent. So microscopes, endoscopes, high-speed drills, cranial and spinal sets, shunts, bipolar sets, as I mentioned, have all been availed to LMIC regions at these negotiated and specially discounted prices. This is the corporate social responsibility of these uh, mega companies that obviously uh, can, if the will is there, and are asked by organizations such as the WFNS Foundation are able to provide this. So I believe, uh, and I would strongly recommend that the WFNS Foundation initiate a similar program to select high quality equipment and implants from suppliers all across US, Europe, China, India, Turkey, Korea, and all the other suppliers who make these instruments and uh, and offer the supplier a WFNL's seal of appreciation. This will significantly reduce the current cost, which is certainly not affordable for the majority of public patients, uh, of our patients in public hospitals in LMIC regions. An important milestone, therefore, will develop to promote quality spine surgery in Africa. For example, we can uh, seek uh, pedicle screw systems at subsidized rates through the WFNS Foundation. I know that halo jackets are not everyone's favorite, but not every uh, 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 neurosurgeon or gen general neurosurgeon or an orthopedic surgeon uh, can can place uh, uh, C2 screws. Uh, and before these patients can be transferred to a place, uh, we need halos. There was a program that I was involved with called Halos for Africa, which brought in a whole range of halo jackets. We distributed these to uh, countries or, or hospitals in the region. But then of course the flow stops. Perhaps the WFNS Foundation could assist 
in seeking out these for those areas where there isn't a spine surgeon who can fix the C2 fracture uh, uh, or uh, cervical fracture and perhaps stabilize that, uh, uh, that patient with a hello jacket and then send them across to a, a place where they can have definitive surgery if the patient requires it. So my recommendation would be the so-called uh, Africa's World WFNS Spine Initiative the WFNS SPI, as I would refer to it, to elevate spine surgery practice in Africa, uh, if that is possible. Uh, just as in the past, significant impact has been made through the WFNS Foundation. And I really am very, very glad that Nigeria is from an LMIC country and Nigeria is going to be our next president. And I, I believe that she's got pen on paper uh, writing this down because the WFNS Foundation uh, can uh, really make this impact towards development of standards of cranial surgery in Africa, which it has. I believe it certainly has. But a fresh initiative by the WFNS Spine Committee working with the foundation could ensure sustainable and the word is sustainable development in spine surgery practice in Africa and in the LMIC region. So please take note of the WFNS Africa Spine Initiative that I believe can lead to a big change on the way uh, spinal surgery is conducted in LMIC countries globally. And as we're talking about Africa, uh, certainly the WFNS Africa Spine Initiative could perhaps be launched today when we are talking about this. So with that, I would thank you very much. And this is an example on the right of a dedicated neurosurgical hospital in Tanzania in Zanzibar, which, as I said, uh, from 2004, when the most sophisticated neurosurgical equipment there was a shunt introducer, which I carried in my uh, briefcase, to today where it can carry out complex spine surgeries Andreas, who was uh, mentioned in one of the publications, was a fellow under uh, uh, working with Roger Hartle and did some of his work in uh, the Mnazi Moja Hospital uh, and wrote some publications. And really, has been this sort of initiative has been instrumental in bringing spine surgery to where it is. I thank you very much for giving me an opportunity, Salman, and I thank everyone for listening. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Koshi, for your great uh, talk on the challenges and the solution on spine uh, surgery practice. So uh, we can take some questions before uh, going to the next uh, uh, talk. I think there is no question. There is, uh, in my opinion, many congratulations for my Moody. <laughs> Great job, and we know all of us that he did uh, a tremendous and uh, really a phenomenal job as a president of CANS. Thank you, Moody, for what you are doing for Africa and neurosurgery in Africa, especially. And your uh, uh, honestly, your your the initiative or or, or uh, uh, WFNS committee initiative. I think it's a very very good idea, and I. Um, um, of course, I um, agree, I'm uh, totally uh, in favor of that. Uh, and I, as, as I already, already promised, in, promised when, I, when we were in, uh, in Kinshasa that we will work together, of course, on this uh, and your experience in, uh, in the foundation is crucial for, for, for the WFNS. And uh, I think, uh, uh, all the uh, ideas, the initiative are, are, are welcome, of course, in the WFNS. And uh, we are here to uh, work together to move uh, with the neurosurgery, not only in Africa. Today we are speaking in, a, uh, with, in neurosurgery and spine neurosurgery specifically in Africa, but around the world and especially, and you really uh, nicely shown us and said, uh, that uh, it's uh, it's very important to have a neurosurgeon well trained first, but also uh, the solution, as I already said, it's not only uh, international collaboration. It's very important. Again, I said that, but we need also that 
our government, our uh, polit uh, our politi political, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the the makers have a should to uh, participate and to uh, have uh, some insurance, especially in the in spine, because it's more. Uh, uh, it, it, it demands more tools, more implant, and extra. It's more custom. So uh, you can count in my on my on my total commitment for uh, not only for the spine committee, but for all the, the committees. But the spine committee, I have of course uh, a weakness for this uh, uh, this this uh, this committee because I. I started my, my first and, uh, operation when I was a uh, young neurosurgeon 30, 30 years ago with, uh, with the spine. So this is, I think, in, in, our, uh, our, in our life, it's very uh, something that you are, uh, you, you are always thinking about your first operation. So it's my first love is this, the spine. Thank you. Roger, thank you have you your Thank you so time. much. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Roger. But before, there is a question on, on uh, uh, how to, to get those uh, Global Fitness Instruments donation. I think it's not a donation. Oh, uh, yeah. oh yeah. It's, 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 uh, sure. Uh, Nadia, would you like to address that? Yeah, it's a donation. Okay. Uh, you can... It's, uh, uh, there is two, uh, there is two uh, as, as uh, I just uh, would say. There is a donation element to it for those that are deserving, but this is an opportunity of being able to purchase those high-end instruments at a very, very subsidized rate. So if one can, if your institution can uh, purchase it, then uh, the WFNS Foundation uh, obviously uh, can purchase it on your behalf. And as Nadia will confirm that those who cannot afford it, then the WFNS Foundation ensures that uh, uh, the criteria, if they are met, and certainly uh, the donation is made. And uh, uh, Nadia, you may want to explain Absolutely. that a little further. Absolutely right. Because the problem before that, uh, uh, of course, uh, all the neurosurgeons uh, who, who we are we were training in the program in the WFNS uh, training program. Uh, of course, normally in when he uh, finished her, his uh, training and come back home, he he uh, he will have he had a donation of uh, this uh, a set uh, so spinal and cranial set instrumentation and microscope and drill etc. But I think in the future, this is this is the problem. What happened in the in the, the past? that the, the people, the, the, the young neurosurgeons who are training in some centers, they're not uh, thinking uh, first, uh, uh, specific, specifically in the last years, when uh, before coming back, to ask the foundation that they need uh, this donation as, uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a training of the WFNS program. Uh, and in the future, we will send if every, uh, every uh, neuro for a surgeon training in this program to send his uh, request at least one year before. Because as uh, uh, Moody said, the majority of this uh, instrument was, uh, were, were donation, is the donation also to the, uh, the, to, to the, 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 the foundation. Sometimes with uh, you know, uh, some prices, uh, basic prices, and sometimes it's do really donation. So we can send it to some uh, some uh, some neurosurgeon, but they have to request it, as he said judiciously. If they have they they, 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 didn't, they didn't need it, if his country can, of course, uh, uh, you know, uh, provide them with the instrument. Why we can send it to this country? We can send it to other country who this who are in the need. This is, uh, I think, in the future that we need to uh, uh, to to work on. It's very important and uh, to work, uh, you know, at least one year before uh, finishing the, their uh, training. Yeah, Roger, you, you had your comment. Thank you. Uh, Mahmoud, thank you so much. That, that was essentially my question. I was just wondering what the mechanism is for, and then obviously um, 
with spinal, if, if this would include spinal instrumentation and so forth, uh, that would be a very exciting project to work on because I assume you would have to work with a number of different companies and uh, maybe uh, get their support, of course, and get their interest level um, and something that'd be very exciting to, to do. There, there's also, I mentioned in my talk, there's a sign foundation in North America that provides implants for orthopedic trauma currently to many different programs around the world. And they're, they're interested in expanding into spine. I don't know if you're aware of those. Uh, uh, the, ones, the, one, uh, the ones who've come to us have been the Nuvasiv group. Nuvasiv. But, I think, yeah, but I think having you on board uh, uh, with Najia and uh, Salman, I, I think we could arm twist quite a few companies to, to offer these. We don't, I don't think the word donation should come into it. I think they should be a negotiated price. For example, the Pico microscope is well over six forty thousand US, and we get it for ten thousand. Now it's gone to twelve thousand US dollars. But really, twelve thousand US dollars is is uh, shouldn't be an issue for a for a for a hospital LMIC that is serious about. Uh, uh, providing good service. And I think if the pedicle screw sets can be, uh, for example, uh, brought and uh, the spine committee can be instrumental in training these people, fellowships can be obtained through for such, uh, such folks, I think we could make a huge difference in LMIC countries uh, if we could negotiate with all these. I mean, the Korean, for example, pedicle screw system is equivalent to the Medtronic, the, the Medtronic company locally actually has the, has got both on their stock and they ask us, do you want the uh, Korean one or do you want the US one? And if we ask the patient, he says, I want the US one. And then that's fine. If they can afford it, that's great. But these companies should be able to you know, do a special deal with the WFNS Foundation. And I think with Nadia's uh, charm, and her negotiating and uh, skills, I'm, I'm absolutely certain we're going to get very good discounts now. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Woody. I'm sure today the diversification of the, the companies, uh, without uh, saying any uh, countries, uh, you know, uh, we can uh, uh, we can have uh, uh, the a drill. Can you imagine a drill for two thousand dollar and yep. uh, working very very well? So yes. we, we need just to know all the these companies and uh, to, to you know negotiate with them the price. It's very easy. I think uh, we need to just to you know work uh, hard on this and, uh, and it's, it's it's a question of negotiating. I mean, yeah. Roger asked Brain Lab and Brain Lab brought up uh, a near navigation equipment to Tanzania. Uh, re and really, there was a time when we were struggling with pulling the uh, uh, the uh, the image intensifier across the operating room, and now we've got uh, thanks to people like Roger a neuro navigation setup. So I think Yoko Kato she just makes a call to Zeiss, and they they ship down uh, the uh, Pentero uh, for surgeries all the way to Africa. So I think it's possible. I think we need to use that goodwill and uh, our positions in the in the WFNS in the spine committee and our contacts uh, globally to be able to do that and I, I I'm really excited to see Roger uh, on the panel because I, I I think walking just with that with that name and saying I've just been sent by Roger Hartle <laughs> how about uh, how about a brain lab for my hospital it would work <laughs> And for yeah. example, I can give you an, an, a, a simple example. We had in my hospital, I have, of course, a, a neural navigation of brain lab. I negotiate and, uh, for uh, six months for uh, a, a really a nice price. But I had at the same time now uh, a program of research with the uh, Boston uh, Harvard School with uh, Alexandra Gonna be, and she give she she sent me when she come to Morocco for one, for one month, and uh, with our engineer we have another uh, uh, neuro navigation which is uh, uh, we will working on, on, and I think it's uh, in the near future it will be uh, uh, we can provide some countries in Africa or uh, uh, LMIC around the world. It costs 
can you imagine the, 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 the price? If I tell you the price, you are very surprised. She was, here, she was here at the Cannes meeting. She was very, very excited. Five thousand dollars. Can you imagine neuro navigation with five thousand dollars? Yeah, that's are, the way. To... I think in your future we can, uh, we can, uh, we have to, you know, to have the of course the authorization and etc. And uh, it, it takes some uh, some months. I think, uh, 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 yeah, Salman, you're the spine uh, committee chair with along with uh, Nicola. I would like to hear your support, man. I think, I think, um, you know, what we have seen up till now, I think with the help of uh, World Federation and obviously uh, all the le leadership, um, I think it's, it is possible. Um, there will be challenges, serious challenges. I think foundation has already had its challenges on its hands, but we need to sort that and help them. Uh, at the same time, but there, there are so many other ways of um, getting uh, help. And I'm sure if we all get together, we can do that. Um, if you remember when we were in Kinshasa recently, we talked about doing a survey for those African uh, trainees who were there. There were 135 of them and so and young resurgence and so that survey is about to start uh, within a week or so so hopefully we'll get more data from them and uh, what their requirement is as young trainees and young uh, neurosurgeons and you know we are listening from the top guys but i think we also need to get all this data from the guys who are on the ground um, who are working out and you know trying to uh, move up so I think once we have all that, it is possible that you know um, the World Federation, along with the Spine Committee and along with all the leadership in Africa, um, should be able to move forward and come up with a plan. And there are various ways of doing it, and not one way. And I'm sure um, we'll be successful if we all um, get our hands together. I, uh, Graham is very quiet, but he just with a phone call he managed to get a neuroscience institute. <laughs> so. <laughs> Graham is next on. That's why he's quiet. <laughs> Graham, you, you want to go on with your talk? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Please. Thank you, uh, Salman. It thank you, uh, to uh, to thank success. you also, Dr. Qureshi. So we are going to, to listen to uh, Professor Graham thank for you. his talk. <clears throat> thank you, Adrachim. And it's, 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 a real, it's a real pleasure to be part of this webinar. Goodness, it's I've been on many, many webinars, but there's been something incredibly persuasive about this one today, and I, I, I can see some wonderful long-term dividends. So thank you very much for asking me to join. So I'm not a spine surgeon. I'm a, I'm a humble pediatric neurosurgeon, um, but I, I'll just maybe make a couple of comments from my perspective as, as, a, as a head of department, sort of um, trying to make sure that we offer good training in, in, in spine surgery. I'll maybe do that first. Someone asked me to talk about the, the Congress in Cape Town. But just um, just maybe to pick up on a couple of things. So, so Roger, I really I really enjoyed your your point about technology only making sense if it improves patient care. And uh, well, one of the things we want to do in Cape Town is to look at the different technologies in spine. We we are going to have a workshop actually on endoscopic spine surgery, which which you mentioned is something that maybe needs to be looked at in more detail in an African context. And I I think you're absolutely correct that we have opportunities in. Africa and in fact I think in all low and low middle income countries where there is a, a, a gap in technology to leapfrog that gap with 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 new and disruptive approaches uh, and I, I think that really is the, the opportunity we have when we all get together and kind of share our experience and then uh, Hamisi uh, it's it's incredible how how in Tanzania you've you've managed to to harness the, the supports of allies, not, not just um, colleagues abroad, but, but your own government. Uh, and I think, as, as John Chibang asked from the Gambia, um, you know, if, if, if you can just you know, help, help all of us to understand how it is that one makes kind of care of neurosurgical patients a priority for the politicians and for the people who make the decisions, I think that's a, that's a critical lesson for, for people across Africa to learn. Um, you know, you, you emphasized uh, critical care, nursing, rehabilitation, uh, Samuel's question as well, sort of, the, and I think the way Samuel put it was that we're nothing without these other colleagues. And it's, it's, it's really important. We, in South Africa, we, we're incredibly fortunate to have pretty good uh, rehab services, as you, as you mentioned. And um, the other area that, that Samuel drew attention to was pre-hospital care. That's obviously really important in neurotrauma. Um, another area that's not really directly relevant to this webinar, but I think is 
massively relevant to burden of disease in Africa is mechanical thrombectomy for stroke. Um, because we've got good pre-hospital care in Cape Town, we've got a, a really, um, really fantastic service now for, for mechanical thrombectomy and the results are incredible. I mean, it must be one of the most revolutionary innovations in healthcare in the last hundred years. So, so finding ways to improve pre-hospital care, I think is, is, is a real priority. And then Moody, my goodness, we need you at the United Nations. I think we need to make you Secretary General. You just, you're the consummate diplomat, and you're always so unbelievably generous to everybody else. But I, I don't, I don't think, I don't think there's anybody who's had boots on the ground the way you have in building healthcare across Africa and neurosurgery. Um, you know, you can talk with such amazing firsthand experience, and I, I think it's a very provocative idea that you've you've presented today of kind of having an Salman, I'm sure you'll pick up the challenge with your amazing committee to actually um you know let's let's make it count in Cape Town and actually come up with an initiative initiative that we agree to uh, as a kind of global strategy to build build spinal care. Um you you did you did ask about spine surgery in South Africa. So in fact, there is a spine society that was established mainly by the orthopods in 1983, and the neurosurgeons got involved. In about 2002, uh, Norman Fisher Jeffs, who I think many of you all know, was the first neurosurgeon who was president of the Spine Society. And obviously, uh, instrumentation, navigation, that sort of thing is widely available now in South Africa. But you know, I, in the early days of my training, you know, you spoke about the the um, the heart cell rectangle. In the early days of my training, we didn't have stuff like that, and we used to get the hospital um, engineers to make rancid loops and. And things like that, and and I, I think it's possible. Um, you know, one of the one of the mantras that I that I love is, um, you know, if you have no money, you have to think. And uh, and I think that for many uh, for many of us in resource limited settings, uh, it is possible if you just understand the principles. You may not have the fancy kit, but you can you can figure out solutions. Okay, so after on, after those comments, um, I have been asked to say something about the meeting in Cape Town. So let me just. Uh, quickly try and share my screen. Oops. Um, okay, can you see my screen there? Cool, okay. So so firstly, uh, just to, to really acknowledge this amazing WFNS Spine Committee, one, one of the, the, I think, very um, uh, imaginative ways that Tony Figaiji has gone about putting together the program for the World Congress is to work very closely with each of the, the WFNS committees and um, the spine committee has been amazing. <laughs> uh, the, the, the amount of education you've done around the world and the perspective you have and the number of people you've been able to bring into the program uh, from, from every single country, I think has been very, very inspiring. So, so thank you, Salman. It's been, I think you've shown amazing leadership and you've, you've, you've had a great committee that's worked very well. And, and I think particularly you've, you've, um, you've managed to actually make the point that spine surgery is is fundamental to neurosurgery in Africa, and that's not something I think a lot of people had had realised uh, before your tenure as the chair. So uh, we've got a great group in Cape Town putting together the meeting. Well, not just in Cape Town. This is across across South Africa. Tony Figaji I mentioned is the scientific chair, and as beautiful as Cape Town is, and as fantastic a meeting as we want to put on, it all kind of really comes down to scientific program, and I think that's that's really what what makes or breaks. Uh, any meeting. Um, South Africa is easy to get to Cape Town, especially. We've got lots and lots of direct flights, um, Kenyan Airways and Ethiopian Airlines to probably the two best African airlines have many, many flights to Cape Town and to Johannesburg. So there's no reason not to come to Cape Town. There are lots and lots of flights. We've got a fantastic venue for those of you who haven't been to Cape Town. We've got this really beautiful world-class uh, convention center, CTICC, where the meeting's going to be held. So it's a, it's a cool place to have a meeting. It's also in a very nice location. Um, the CTICC is down here, very close to the waterfront, uh, in walking distance uh, from the waterfront, in fact, from attractions like the World Cup Stadium, uh, very short drive to get to Table Mountain and, and the other delights of Cape Town. So it's a, it's a nice venue, um, wide range of hotels, uh, for those of you who happen to have US dollars in your wallets, um, it's unbelievably cheap coming to South Africa at the moment. Our currency has taken a real pounding, so you can get into amazingly um, nice hotels for less than, less than a couple hundred dollars. 
Uh, and for those who don't have US dollars in their wallets, we've we've also got some very inexpensive hotels. So um, the meeting is is hopefully going to be cost effective uh, for everybody to attend. Lots of different accommodation options. Um, registration, we've still got another month before the early bird registration ends. And we are, go we are going to offer um, at least 200 scholarships if we can raise the money. And I'll, I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, so the program, as I mentioned, Tony's taken, I think, a very imaginative approach and in very innovative in the way he's, he's, he's doing this. Um, there have been some really cool ideas that have come from all the, uh, the committee chairs. And we've got some fantastic invited speakers um, that we'll hopefully be uh, able to tell you about in the next couple of weeks. Um, so the scientific program, essentially the two key features are gonna be state-of-the-art neurosurgery, and then looking at looking at global neurosurgery and the ways in which um, the whole global surgery movement is, is uh, leveraging the impact of, of neurosurgery around the world. So one of the other things I think one also needs to acknowledge is that uh, it's been a tough time for the World Federation um, probably the most common question I've had over the last year is, will the meeting actually happen? Uh, and there's absolutely no doubt it is going to happen. Um, but I think one of the important things is this is an opportunity to, to, to in a sense, rebuild the World Federation. And many of you know the message of Archbishop Tutu of Ubuntu, which is essentially that each of us is who we are through other people. And we really want to use this opportunity to come to South Africa. Let's really kind of build on the message of reconciliation that Nelson Mandela taught us and, and find a way to rebuild a really wonderful global neurosurgical community that, that works in the interests of everybody. Um, I mentioned um, the early bit uh, registration deadline. Uh, it's coming out in a month's time. Uh, abstract submission has closed. Uh, we've got close to 1,500 abstracts we're working through at the moment, but it it is still open for posters. Um, and in fact, I think one of the things we need to kind of really rethink in neurosurgical meetings is the value of poster sessions. Uh, poster sessions are often uh, a very interactive opportunity. And there are many, many really prominent scientific meetings where it's actually very prestigious to have a poster. Um, the Society for Neuroscience, which is the biggest meeting in the US, um, it's a point of pride for them that often Nobel laureates uh, give poster presentations. So I think let's not, let's not look down on posters. Posters are a really great opportunity to present your work. And we're going to be accepting posters for another couple of months for this meeting. And we will have another late breaking abstract um, uh, opportunity for anybody who's got some really nice uh, recent uh, results they want to present orally. I mentioned scholarships, so we've opened applications for scholarships and we're fundraising furiously for this. So if any of you have got rich friends who want to contribute, uh, please let me know. Um, so Cape Town's a pretty cool place to come to. There are many other uh, very beautiful places in the world, but uh, just a bit of a boost recently, Cape Town got voted um, the best city in the world to visit. And in fact, South Africa got voted at the present time the uh, most value place in the world to visit. There are an amazing range of things to do in Cape Town. I, I would really recommend of, of all the of all the sources you can look for information, have a look at this inside guide. Um, whatever your interest, whether it's fancy restaurants or shark cage diving or history or looking at flowers or what any human activity you could possibly imagine, uh, you'll find that in Cape Town. And 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 this is a good place to find some inspiration. Uh, lots and lots of different things that you can do in Cape Town, and we've got lots and lots of things you can do before and after the Congress. Um, if you haven't been uh, to Sub-Saharan Africa before and you want to have an experience in the bush or whatever, um, we, we can help you organize that too. Um, so many, uh, many friends that I recognize who are kind of listening to, to this webinar today, thank you all of you for joining. Uh, please tell your friends. Uh, please encourage uh, all your colleagues to, to, to join this meeting. Um, I think we, we really do have an opportunity to not just, uh, as Nelson Mandela said, to use education um, as a weapon to change the world, but to also kind of really um, build even closer ties uh, within our neurosurgical community worldwide. So I'm going to skip over the video and just end with my email address there. Um, and any, anybody, please just feel free to email me directly if you have any questions. I'm getting quite a few emails at the moment, so if I don't reply, just hit resend 
um yeah someone's laughing um yeah you can i do eventually reply someone um but uh, yeah please get in touch with me and um uh, of of all the many highlights of the program i can tell you there's going to be a sensational spine program and i think many many of the issues that have been discussed here today um we can hopefully sort of uh, really carry further when when we meet in cape town in december it's great meeting online but nothing beats uh being together and um Cape Town's a lovely place to do that. So I uh, hope we see you in a few months' time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Graham, for this talk. This congress is very important for Africa. As, uh, the, the last congress in Africa was in uh, 18 years ago in Morocco. So we are working. Uh, to ensure that a uh, lot of uh, North Asian Africa will be present massively in this Congress. Thank you. And you all want to be there to see Najib become the president? Oh, sure. We are, of course, uh, after you, definitely, <laughs> we are uh, all of us uh, uh, making our all our, our best to advise uh, advise all people, all those around the world to attend this uh, this meeting, it's the second meeting in Africa, and uh, it's a double celebration because we have the, the, the World Congress in Africa and also the next, uh, next president, uh, African next president. So at least we need to have uh, the best and uh, more successful uh, ever uh, World Congress in the world. And uh, good luck, and we are here for you. Of course, you can count on our uh, values. Thank you, Nadia. <clears throat> Thank you. Any questions, any comments from anybody before we wrap up, Nicolet? May I have a suggestion for, uh, uh, for um, Graham about the, uh, some, some speakers, faculty speakers, because you, uh, I think it, is, it was a good idea to, uh, keep in touch with the chairman of committee to have the, the uh, you know the the talks. But we need all you need you need also to uh, send uh, emails to all the societies yeah. around. And, uh, have... and I've, I've been in I've been in contact with society. I know. Um, yeah. Just for uh, you know for uh, the uh, the audience to know that you are doing that. Uh, and uh, there is maybe some people that uh, when you show shown us uh, that the, the, the deadline is or is over you can maybe have uh, did do some uh, exception for uh, some uh, countries who have no yeah. no, no so, so Nadia, that's a very important point so people can still i mean i'm I've, I've been getting emails during this webinar from people still wanting to submit um so it's possible to submit posters, we are we are going to um, obviously consider if they're really good abstracts to come in. We will consider them, and we will have a late breaking opportunity. And we are continuing to include uh, invited speakers as as names come in. So my my email is there, and I'm keen to hear from people. Good, great, great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Salman, do you want to add something? I think it's brilliant. I think uh, we have excellent suggestions. We have um, uh, all we need to do is get together and come make a plan and present that to the president. And uh, president has to do the rest. Then, uh, no, I think we all will work together and uh, we'll come up with a plan. And uh, I think Moody gave excellent suggestions. Roger has given uh, us a way forward. How should we go about it? And I think there are so many people who want to help at the same time. And um, there are, you know, when, when you were recently doing all these uh, workshops in Africa, we see every time we go, the knowledge there is, is completely different. Every time we go, we find that, you know, their knowledge is at a different level. All of a sudden, they keep on improving. And it's, it's, it's amazing. Uh, I think the, the a lot of webinars during the COVID time have improved their knowledge as well. And on top of it, there are so many enthusiastic young guys who are willing to learn and want to move forward. And, you know, with the, the leadership we have at the moment, I think I'm sure we can take them, you know, quite a way forward. Um, 
And, you know, I think uh, I'm, I'm thankful to Nicolay for helping us uh, in setting up this webinar. And Graham, as always, has been brilliant. Um, I, I think it was my first time to see uh, Hamishi, but, you know, his, his comments, et cetera, were brilliant. He really enjoyed that. And uh, we, we, do, we, we do have a, a model already in front of us, and I'm sure we can repeat this model with learning from the experience that they have had. Uh, Nicolay, your last comments, please. No, it was amazing, amazing to see, sorry, some microphone, okay. Uh, amazing to see that uh, Africa is rising and uh, there is... Uh... Sorry, that's sorry. David Alvesodonia. <laughs> <laughs> David, we will just go to unmute you so that you can Going talk. off as always. <laughs> Okay. And un 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 unmute yourself and you can say a few words before we wrap up. <laughs> David, you need to unmute yourself. You have your... Oh, yeah, okay. Hi, everybody. This is the group of surgeons who operate in Dr. Governor. They okay. Are just, they're, they're just heading off to Atlanta, Georgia now. And oh. uh, we've also had the Sanosa meeting, which they were listening to. And they listened to the presentation and they were quite excited that they're also part of the team that helps with your surgery in Africa. So that's Bethel Raore, who, whose mother worked with Renato Roberti. Behind there, that's Joe. There's Edgar. And then we also have Charmaine. And that's quite me. So good presentation. Thank you, Thank you very much. And we'll, we will see you in South Africa. Thank you for making history in Kisumu, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, thank you. That's brilliant. Yes, sorry, Nicola, if you can wrap up now. <laughs> yeah, I think some. I think somebody is not muted, and it's an awful microphone. So if we are not speaking, we have to mute ourselves, please. Yeah, I. I just wanted to say, amazing meeting. It is. Um, the impression is that there is a great collaboration ongoing and that things are developing for Africa. And uh, it, it is, it's my pleasure to be part of that and to be part of the organizing it. And uh, I see that there is a lot of enthusiastic people working uh, on the right direction and together. And I can see that things are moving. So it is symbolic that uh, the next double FNS meeting is in Africa, that the next double FNS president is um, is from Africa, that the next double FNS president is a woman for a first time on top of double FNS. So all symbolic things. So hopefully things will be, uh, we, we, are in, we, are, we, are, we are waiting for a great future. Thank you. Thank you so much for presentations, for participation, for comments. And I think it's time for the, for the, for, for the group photo, someone. So thank you to all uh, the the member of the spine committee for this wonderful uh, wonderful webinar. Thank you. So Nico. Unmute Please, yourself. everybody, everybody, put your camera on, and then we'll have a picture. All of us. Imat is happy to do that for us again. Can you switch on, yes, the, switch on all your videos, please? Thank you. Brilliant, brilliant. and smile. <laughs> Cheese. Yes, thank you. <laughs> okay, brilliant. It was all wonderful. Right. Wonderful, really. Thank okay, you. thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.